Okay. I wasn't completely wrong. I was on the right path. I was, I was going the right direction. But it's like I didn't go far enough. Let me explain. So as you may or may not know, this is my winter beehive setup that I use for the past five seasons to get my bees through winter. From my very first winter of beekeeping, this is the system that I came up with. And this is what I've always used. In this video, I'm gonna tell you why I'm not using this anymore, what I'm using instead, and I'm gonna give you suggestions on what you can do if you're using sort of a copy of this system. I wanna show you how you can make it better. And before you head down in the comments and start typing away telling me, I told you you were wrong, your system sucks. This system isn't wrong. I don't think it's ideal, but my hive survived many winters using this setup. In 2018, 12 out of 12 of my colonies survived the winter in this setup. In 2019, this exact setup, 12 out of 13 colonies survived. And in 2020, I had a mite problem bad management on my part, I lost almost all my bees. The bees didn't die because of this setup. It was because of mites. So this setup works. The thing is, I think it makes the bees work a lot harder to survive than the setup I'm gonna explain right now. Okay, so why do I bother to wrap my hives in the first place? Well, I live in Massachusetts, zone 5A at 1200 foot elevation. My bees live on a windy hillside and six months of the year, we have winter. From October 1st till about the end of April, there's no local forage here. So what they have in their hives is all they have to eat. Five months of the year, they are not even flying. They're in their box. And I believe that wrapping them in some kind of protection is a good idea and it helps them to survive. It makes their lives easier. This phrase, was beaten into my head on day one of beekeeping. And it continues to be out there in the world, in books and in forums and on the internet, everywhere. People hear this over and over, and I kind of think it's garbage. At least the first half of the saying is ridiculous. If you don't think cold can kill bees, go ask someone like Ian Stepler why he bothers to bring 1,500 beehives into a climate-controlled shed for the entire winter. Cold can definitely kill a colony of bees. Now, in a second, I'm going to get to why I think the second half of this saying is ridiculous. But when I was starting out, hearing moisture kills bees is what inspired me to come up with this entire wrapping system that I used for the last five years. All right, moisture kills bees. This is the nutshell theory of why moisture kills bees. You got your beehive here, a couple of boxes. You got frames inside there. You got a lid here and you got a cluster of bees in there. The bees are consuming honey and they're breathing. They're giving off moisture. They're creating a humid, warm environment inside that hive. Now outside, it is cold. There's cold air outside the hive. Cold air is making the lid cold. So this is a cold lid up here. What happens when humid, moist air hits a cold surface? It's the water is gonna condense on the ceiling of the hive and you're gonna get droplets up on the ceiling of the hive. Those droplets are gonna drip down on your bees and wet bees is a bad deal in the winter time. So this is why you wanna keep the moisture out of the hive or so the saying goes. So being a practical thinking person, I decided to approach this with a belt and suspender solution. First, I wanted to keep the cold air away from the beehive lid. So I built these outside shells here. This is two inch thick foam insulation. And these go over the telescoping lids. The thought here is that these thick covers would keep cold air from hitting that lid. So if any water was in there, it wouldn't condense on the inside of that lid. So this was the first part of the solution. The second part of the solution, Vivaldi boards. But this isn't actually a Vivaldi board. This is one of my modified shims with an inner cover, but same idea. The concept is this. The bees are down inside the hive, down here under the inner cover. They're breathing, they're creating moisture down in the hive. 
that moisture is going to rise up because it's in warm air. So the warm air comes up into this cavity here. This is relatively cold compared to the hive. Inside this cavity, you put a bunch of burlap. The burlap is absorbent. It acts like a wick. The moisture that's in that warm air is going to come up and condense into the burlap. So the burlap's going to get wet, but the burlap can dry out through these holes here. The idea is the moisture is kind of pulled out of the hive and it comes up in here and it doesn't get stuck on the inside of that inner cover and then drip back down on the cluster. Now these things work great. They've worked great for me and they've solved this problem for the past six years. But I think there's a better way. So a Vivaldi board is a tool that works perfectly fine and it may be suitable for lots of places in the world, but in very cold climates, a Vivaldi board is a solution to a problem that is entirely preventable in the first place. Remember this? This brings me back to why I think the second half of this saying is ridiculous. I've been monitoring the humidity levels in my beehives for this entire season with the Broodminder sensors. I can watch the humidity and it has been nice and stable in a perfect, healthy, bee-friendly zone for this entire summer. The hottest days of the year, the rainiest weeks we've had, I've been putting gallons of syrup in the hives for the past month and humidity levels have been pegged perfect. The bees are dealing with moisture fine. Moisture is not a bad thing. What we're worried about is condensation dripping on the cluster. Now, rather than trying to remove that condensation from the hive with a Vivaldi board, I think the better way is to prevent it from forming in the first place using insulation more insulation. And I'm not talking about just putting insulation inside your inner cover or like a piece of insulation on the lid. I'm talking full insulation. So here's where I was headed in the right direction, but I've been getting it wrong all these years. I got insulation on top, on the sides, and in the back. I don't have insulation underneath the hive, and I don't have insulation on the front. I've got an upper entrance here, which allows for heat to escape, and I have a Vivaldi board inside, which heat can also escape through. So the problem here is that this is just a thin piece of plastic and the thermal loss through a three quarter inch piece of wood behind this plastic on a cold night has got to be ridiculous. So it would be better to have this insulated for the bees to retain the heat inside. I thought that the coroplast would allow for solar gain on a sunny day in the winter time, but there's no way that solar gain compares to the amount of heat that could be retained by insulation. The bees generate heat inside. They don't need the sun to, to warm the hive in the winter time. What we want to do is to retain that heat inside the hive. So this is what a lot of bees in the world are dealing with right now. You got thin walled boxes with no insulation on the roof or very little insulation on the roof. You got cold outside penetrating through gaps and cracks penetrating through the bottom. The bees are going through tons of resources to maintain the temperature and humidity levels in the hive. This is what I think the solution is. A fully encapsulated hive, insulation on all four sides, top and bottom, and a small lower entrance. No upper entrance, no Vivaldi board, nothing. Just full insulation. This keeps the cold out. It keeps any air from escaping. The bees can go in and out here and they maintain, using their bodies, they maintain the heat and humidity inside the hive. Give them a nice comfortable place to exist and they will consume less resources in the hive and maintain a comfortable environment for themselves. So this is what I built. So these are the new bee hives. I made an entire video about why I built these hives earlier this year. And this winter, I'm gonna be making a video about how I built these hives. But here's the nutshell version. Inside this hive, there is a deep and a medium Langstroth hive box combo. So the cavity inside here is a deep medium depth. The hive boxes are wrapped with two inches of polystyrene insulation that goes all the way around. All of the seams are zip taped and the insulation is close to the wood, so there are no air gaps in there. The insulation is wrapped with one and a half inch Alaskan yellow cedar. And the cedar is glued at all seams and it's very tight against the insulation, so there's no air gaps between the cedar and the insulation. Anywhere where the cedar is touching insulation, I caulked it with 100% silicone caulk. So everything in here is very airtight and this goes all, all around four sides 
of the hive boxes. The entire sandwich of hive bodies and then the insulation and then the cedar is about four and a quarter inches thick, which is roughly R13. Underneath the hive, in the hive stand, I put a two inch sheet of polystyrene, so that's R10 below the hive. That's a nice tight press fit underneath there. The bees have a reduced eight inch entrance and it's only the lower entrance. The upper entrances have been sealed for the entire summer. So they're only going in and out and they're only getting airflow from this entrance. There's no other airflow in the hive. All right, let me show you the upper part of the hive. Now this may have been confusing in the initial build video because during that time I did not put insulation at the top of the hive because the hives were going into the summer. But now that it's winter, I'm gonna winterize. So this is a standard telescoping lid. This is how the bees have gone through this entire summer. Up here on top of the inner cover, which is down here, is this box. Now this box looks kind of like a Vivaldi board, but it's not acting as a Vivaldi board. This was acting as a feeding area, which is why I have feed in here now. It's October. Um, also, I've had burlap in here all summer long. The burlap is not acting as a wick. It's not acting as a Vivaldi board style thing. This is sort of a heat dissipation area. There wasn't food on here in the summer, but this was filled with burlap. Imagine the sun beating down on the tops of these hives. I didn't want that sun hitting the inner cover and making the hives hotter than they need to be. So I had this up here as a buffer zone. And I knew that in the winter, I was gonna want this for insulation, but also for feeding in late winter and springtime. So that's what I'm gonna do right now is get these bees ready for winter. And you will not believe how easy this is. That's it. That's the winter prep. So this is how the bees are gonna go through the winter. And there is one step that I didn't show on the video here. In a couple weeks, I'm gonna take the syrup out of that box. That, that tub is gonna come out. I'm gonna take the burlap out and then inside the wooden box in here, on top of the inner cover, I will stack polystyrene insulation directly on the inner cover. So that will keep heat down in the hive. There's not gonna be any vents in there. There's not gonna be any place for air to get out of the hive. It's gonna stay down under the inner cover. So polystyrene will be stacked in that box. And then this is around the entire thing, which creates a whole continuous layer of insulation all the way around here and then all the way down here. So the whole hive inside this box is protected from the elements and there isn't cold air touching any part of the beehive that's inside here. The bees have a lower entrance only. That's where they're gonna come in and out. That's where airflow will come in and out and the bees will maintain their temperature inside and their humidity inside all by themselves, just with their bodies. And because there's not gonna be any cold air touching any part of the wooden beehive, there shouldn't be any condensation. So all the bees are gonna have in there is warm, humid air that they control. They are their own HVAC system and they are going to maintain their own temperature and their own environment inside there with protection from the outside elements. So why did I build this huge box that goes over another box? Why couldn't I just put the insulation directly on the lid and call it a winter? Well, I could have done that, but I like to think ahead and think about the spring and the fall as well as the winter. And I want this to be like a four season system. So that wooden box in there is gonna stay on the hive year round. And that is for feeding purposes. So right now it's fall. I've got my food in here. I got my burlap in here. The bees are nice and happy down below there. That lid can go on right now. It's October and just stay on and it's on there. When I want to feed, I can just come in here, take that off, take the bucket out and feed the bees right up through the end of October usually. For the winter, this is gonna come out, there'll be polystyrene in the box, then the lid goes back on top. In the springtime, I'm able to take that polystyrene and put it in there in such a way that I leave a space to feed pollen patties, emergency sugar or fondant if they need it, or I can just have a way to peer into the hive in the winter just to make sure that the cluster's doing all right. 
So I like having this box here as a place to put food and you know intermediate inter insulation or burlap or whatever I need to do. And then that cover just fits right over the whole deal. And in case anyone's wondering, yes, the inside of these covers are angled and mitered to mate up with the angle and miter of the beehive. Everything's nice and flush because I like details. All right, so is this too much? Is this overkill? I don't think so, but these are my bees and this is what I do with my bees. If you think so, please tell me in the comments. If you like this idea and you like this concept and you don't wanna go for this whole system like this, but you wanna give your bees a little more insulation, a little more help in the winter, let me show you a few ways you can do this kind of thing with the hive you have. Number one, before you do anything to your hives, please do some research. I suggest starting with this article by William Hesbach. I read this article about two years ago, and it was the first thing that made me start to question Vivaldi boards and upper entrances and all the stuff I used to do to my beehives. He goes really deep into how hives work over the winter and how inefficient the old Langstroth wooden boxes are, and it, it really just changed my mind. Please go read this article. Also, go subscribe to Etienne Tardif on YouTube. He keeps bees up in the Yukon in Canada, and his winters are a lot longer and a lot colder than our winters here. And if some of the stuff I'm saying on this video sounds a little nutty, Etienne has already done it. He's been doing it for years. He has the data and the research behind it, and he shares all of the temperature data and sensor data in his hives, and he shows how this stuff works. So go subscribe to Etienne and tell him I said hi. Number two, I highly suggest putting temperature and humidity sensors inside your hives. This is not a sponsored video, but I love the Broodminder. After putting these in my hives and using the corresponding app and web service, it was the most eye-opening thing I have done in beekeeping. I really started to see that the bees truly are an HVAC system. They control the temperature and the humidity in the box, and they do it despite the weather and the outside temperature. And then I realized that giving them insulation, giving them a controlled environment inside the box, that made their job a lot easier, allowing more bees to go out and do foraging and, and take care of brood. So this changed how I keep my bees. It's not a huge investment, but definitely go pick some up and put them in your hives. All right, number three here is a little bit tricky. I wanna be very clear that I am not telling you how to keep your bees and I'm not suggesting you go do these things to your hives. These are the things that I think about now, the concepts that I have in my head when I'm preparing my bees for winter. Single biggest change for me this year, the biggest head flip was closing my upper entrances and closing the Vivaldi board vents in all of my hives. So with only lower entrances and the tops closed off, I was able to monitor the temperature in the hive and I noticed that it was a nice stable brood temperature in all the hives. Except for one hive, I did leave an upper entrance because they had it earlier so I just left it there and I noticed the temperature in that hive would fluctuate. At night it would go down, in the day it would go back up. Down at night, up in the daytime. And I went up and I closed the upper entrance and sure enough, the temperature stabilized in that hive after the entrance was closed. And then I realized how important it was to close those vents and keep the heat that the bees generate inside the box. So for me, no more upper vents or upper entrances ever again. Now, as far as insulation goes, there's this old belief that putting a piece of insulation up in your telescoping cover on top of your hive is gonna keep your inner cover warm enough to prevent condensation from forming and you know water dripping on your bees and that this is somehow a suitable winterization technique for beehives. And I don't believe that's true at all because where does heat go when it rises up to the lid? It's just gonna blast out all four sides of your, your leaky wooden box that your bees are in. So I don't believe this does anything. And I must reluctantly admit that the same is also true of this. While this is better than a single piece of insulation tucked up underneath a telescoping lid, there's still a ton of places for heat to escape from this system. So now I do believe that this is incorrect. But there's a fix. If this was my hive and I had a system already built like this and I didn't have my bee barns that I do now, I would take a fourth piece of insulation 
and I would attach it to the front. I would close off the upper entrances and I would seal this entire thing with zip tape. So one of the main principles I think about when I'm building my shells and my insulation system is everything has to be overlapped like this and also air sealed. So I make sure that everything is either glued together or taped with zip tape. So there's no air leakage around any parts of the foam because if you could, you could wrap a hive with foam and, and have holes like this in the foam and it, it'll, it's doing nothing. Heat just escapes, it finds the gaps. So overlap everything. This stuff costs about 30 bucks a roll, but I have stuff that I've built five years ago that I leave outside and the tape is still fine. So this stuff lasts a long time. It's a very good investment and it goes a long way. Oh, you're still here? All right, if you're wondering what the point of this video is, let me just say that I have been insulating my hives for the past six years in various ways, and I have had hundreds of comments in the comments section that boil down to basically, I leave my bees in a wooden box and I live in Canada and they survive fine. And I have to say, that's great. I'm happy for your bees. But the goal here is not for the bees to survive. I want my bees to thrive. I want them to have less stress. I want them to not have to worry about heating the hive in the winter, cooling the hive in the summer. I want them to start off the year a lot more healthy coming out of winter. I mean, think about a wooden box in the winter time. The bees are gonna cluster in there and they're gonna just try and stay warm. They're gonna go through resources and they're not gonna start brood rearing until the temperature warms up outside. In an insulated situation, they're gonna brood up a lot earlier, perhaps months earlier. And they're gonna go through fewer resources in the winter because they don't have to spend all their energy heating up the hive all the time. So that's the goal here. The goal is more productive bees. And I believe that insulation does that. I was a little wrong in how I was doing it up till now, but I think I finally have it figured out. Thanks to Etienne and William Hesbach. Please go read those articles and, and check out Etienne's website. Um, but that's kind of that's kind of the point. So thanks for sticking around this long This video has taken a long time to edit and and film, but uh, I appreciate you sticking around Happy beekeeping happy winter